In this clip, I will talk you through how I created this watercolour Christmas card design of a glowing reindeer. I will talk you through all of the techniques that I used and show you all of the materials I used to create this design. I'm going to start by talking about the equipment that I'm using. The first thing is the watercolours. They are Winsor & Newton Cotman half pans and they have a wide variety of colours. I will be listing in the side the colours that I have used specifically when I get onto the tutorial. I'm also using Florence watercolour paper. These are really great for watercolour Christmas cards or any type of greeting cards because they come ready cut into A5. I will also be using the silver black velvet paint brushes. These are a really good brand because they use lots of water and you don't have to keep going back and forth to the water to change them. I will be using nail brushes because they're really good for fine details. I'll be using washi tape for the edges. And finally, I'll be using acrylic gold paint for finishing touches. Obviously, this is an optional extra, but you could equally use a gold marker pen or gel pen. For this Christmas card, I used a reference image as a starting point. And if you would like to paint along with me, I have added a link in the description below. So the first thing that I needed to do was to sketch out my image and I added some Christmas baubles to the main image of the reindeer. So you can see me here just adding those finishing touches to the reindeer and adding those baubles just randomly. There wasn't any great plan with regards to this, but the main section was adding the reindeer, having that as a central focus and then adding those baubles. Now the main element of planning this was I wanted to get across the glow effect. So when I come on to painting, you will see how I plan that out. So as you know, I pretty much always start with the background. So I had to consider when looking at my image, how was I going to create a glowing effect from the antlers and from the Christmas baubles. So what I decided to do was to choose the color of the baubles and paint a glow around them, which I was going to use to facilitate the colors later. And also to paint a glow around the antlers. And for this, I used a mix of china white and yellow ochre. For the outer edges of the baubles, I used cadmium red hue, emerald green, cerulean blue, and cadmium yellow hue. As I mentioned earlier, the most important element of this painting was to capture the glow of the antlers and also the baubles. So painting the background is an important element of this because I had to contrast the darkness of the background with the glowing antlers to make them stand out more. I didn't bother sketching the background out because really the placement of all of the elements wasn't really that important. However, I did want to get it in roughly the same place and I decided to build it up in layers. So the first layer that I decided to mix up was a watery mix of Payne's Grey and I was going to just paint the whole background with a watery mix of Payne's Grey, paying careful attention to those glowing areas that I painted around initially with the white and yellow ochre.
because I was conscious that I wanted to create the depth of field effect in this photograph, I was conscious that I had to work quite quickly to add the layers whilst the background surface was wet, otherwise known as wet on wet technique. There were areas where I had to let the paint dry, so I added water with a spray bottle later and this was equally as effective. This second mixture of colour that I'm adding is a mixture of Payne's Grey and Prussian Blue and if there are areas that were going over a little bit or expanding more than I would like, I just tidy them up a little bit with a cotton bud to ensure that it's not blooming more than I would like to or sometimes I'm blending out with my paintbrush as you can see here.
I will now be applying a layer of quite dark Payne's Grey to add the final details and the foreground layers. So because of this, I have just sprayed the whole area with a spray bottle. I have made sure that I have dried off all the areas that I don't want the paint to run into because obviously, say for example, some of the water has gone onto the reindeer. If I don't dry those off with a cotton bud, then what will happen is the paint will automatically run onto that area. So I want to make sure that area is completely dry. And then I'm going to start just dappling on the paint to create an abstract effect of the trees being in the foreground.
So I started off painting the deer by going to the ears and I started by painting a base layer of yellow ochre and adding a tiny amount of china white to it and then for the darker areas I just went over the top with some sepia and allowed that to expand and tidied that up with a cotton bud. I'm now adding some raw sienna into the tones on the head to make the image brighter and also to add a mid-tone to these tonal values. For the darker tones I'm taking the sepia directly from the pan and I'm mixing that with the raw sienna and the yellow ochre and I'm mixing that directly on the paper to create the mid-tones and the dark tones. For the neck and collar area there are quite a few greyish tones so I've decided to mix a watery mix of Payne's Grey and blend that in with the sepia on the right hand side.
because the brush marks were too harsh and contrasty I decided to use a spray bottle just to loosen them up to go in with the rest of the feel of the painting. For the base colour of the antlers I've made a mix of white and yellow ochre to get a golden glowing effect and I'm going to paint this all over the antlers. Rather than adding the fine details in watercolour, which you can of course do, I'm going to add the fine details in watercolour pencil and then go over it with a nail brush. So I'm adding some really fine details now in a brown dark sepia tone watercolour pencil and then I will go over it with a nail brush. Whilst painting the antlers, I'm also going to blend out the baubles as a finishing touch to make sure that they look more 3D. So I'm just going over with the nail brush to make sure that I'm bringing in all that colour to the central area of the baubles.
So now I'm going to go in and add the finishing touches with more watercolour pencils. I'm going to go in and add the finishing touches to the eyes with black and then I will go back over with colour pencils. I'm going to use Caran Dash Luminance because that's a very good opaque pencil to add the reflections in the eyes. For the finishing touches I wanted to keep them as subtle as possible so I decided to add the strings for the baubles with mechanical pencil because I knew this would be a really thin line and would not be too overpowering. So now for the final pit of sparkle or glisten, 
I'm now going to add some gold acrylic paint. Now, you won't see the full effect of this on the screen, but imagine when you give someone a homemade Christmas card and there's that little bit of sparkle when they open the card and they can see the effect of that gold acrylic shimmering in the light. It makes it a little bit special and a little bit unique. So it's really worth putting the effort in and just adding the bit of gold acrylic, either with a paintbrush or if you've got a gold marker pen or a gold gel pen you can just use that if you feel more confident using that that's fine it works in the same way If you would like to check out more Christmas content like this, check out the Christmas playlist above. If you would like to improve your watercolour skills further, check out the watercolour playlist below. If Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. And if you would like to find out more about the products and resources used in today's clip, then check out the description below.